sometimes things are not what they seem, vis-a-vis -vis Thomas Ravenscroft. You may not know him, but you sure know his music. How about mi re do, mi re do, so far for me, so far for me, so do do ti la ti do, so 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 do do ti la ti do, so 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 do 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 ti la si do, so so for me re do. Three blind mice may have a reference to the possible blinding and certainly death of three perceived apostate officials, bishops, in England under Bloody Mary when she attempted to turn Reformation England back to Catholic England. The original Three Blind Mice, as recorded, notated, set down by Thomas Ravenscroft, was actually more minor to go with perhaps that ominous reference. Instead of C major, A minor. Do ti la. Ooh. Thomas Ravenscroft also is credited with the first notation of three ravens, which evolves into trois corbies. And in the original version, a dead knight is protected by his hounds and his fair maiden from being despoiled. In the evoluted version, the evolution of the piece, trois corbies, it's only two ravens. And these, of course, meat eating ravens. And the hounds have left. And the fair maiden has gone for another lover. Bummer. Do, do, re, me, do, te, te, do. And then the middle part. Me, me, fa, so, 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 fa, me, so. Do, do, re, me, fa, re, do. Ooh. And of course this is strophic, a series of verses which become increasingly dangerous and downer as the piece evolves. As I was walking all alone, I spied two corbies mocking me. The tail and two that tither did sail. Where shall we gang and die in the day? Oh, where shall we gang and die in the day? In behind yon old fell dyke, and what there lies a new slain knight. Nobody kens that he lies there, oh. But his hawk and his hound and his lady fair, oh. His hawk and his hound and his lady fair. His hound is to the hunting game. His hawk to fetch the mule fowl him. His lady's tame on neither maid, oh. Say we may mock go to dinner sweet, oh. Say we may mock go to dinner sweet, upon his white house bed, and I'll pick out his bonny blue in with many a lock of his yellow hair. Oh, will the good nest where it grows bare? Oh, will the good nest where it grows bare? Many a in for him, much men, but men shall gain where he has been for his white bed. Fresco Baldi, more known for his solo keyboard works, but he does do solo song, and this is an evolution of the solo magical tradition in late Monteverdi. Here with figured bass, well, no figures, but basso continuo, I guess you have to determine the chords by looking at what the melody's doing. G, natural and melodic minor. Me, re, do, re, do, re, me, me, do, re, me, fa, fa.
book of songs never gets around to a second. These are instrumental and canonic. We're hearing at present two cornets. Those are wooden finger hole trumpets. We heard one in the Monte Verde Vespers from the conductor. And this is on So Me, Also Me. It's Nana Nana again. cornet is long enough, it might get kind of ungainly, and indeed, the two start snaking around on themselves, get bent, hence the serpent, and this will survive into the 19th century and will be known as the Ophiclide, and the Ophiclide itself will eventually be superseded by, of course, the tuba. If it seems like there's been a lot of overlap between the late Renaissance and the early Baroque, you're right, but this pretty much wraps it up with Orlando Gibbons' Tra Prodigy. He is in the service of King James I, of King James Bible fame, and this is right after the reign of Queen Elizabeth, and Shakespeare is still alive for part of this era. And in The Silver Swan, we have kind of a culmination of the magical tradition, the word was that the swan only sang upon its death, and then the world is left with nothing but foolish geese. Do, do, la, ti, do, la, so, fa, mi, re, re, fa, so, la, mi, so, do, re, do, do. The recording you just heard was a half step low. This one's a half step high. And we get to the climax with death and a striking use of an E-flat augmented chord of E-flat, G, B natural, and it's Te, Re, Fi, and that's the tritone, the devil's interval, ooh, and it's also in first inversion with the G being the bass. <laughs> Heinrich Schutz considered the greatest German composer before Johann Sebastian Bach, possibly depicted by Rembrandt. Studies down in Venice with Giovanni Gabrielli, and he considers Gabrielli his only teacher. And boy, does he learn, brings it back home to Protestant Germany, the polychoral motets antiphonal with lots of dynamics. And what do we have in Zau Zau, Was vergobst du mich? The story of Saul in the Bible, and that's the New Testament Saul, not to be confused with the Hebrew scriptures, Saul, the first king of Israel, the rival, ultimately, of King David. Saul in the New Testament is a Pharisee who has been very effective at putting the new Christians in jail in Jerusalem. He's run out of Christians to put in jail. 
was going to go up to Damascus and perhaps in the canyons of Damascus he hears a resonant sound Zau Zau if he hadn't suddenly become German it would be Was verkopst du mich Saul Saul why do you persecute me the full text who are you I am Jesus whom you persecute it is useless in his translation to say why do you kick against the thorn but Gotta love that King James. Why do you kick against the pricks? Ooh -hoo. So, how are we gonna set this? We're talking setting the voice of God. Well, you could think of the Holy Trinity, that and maybe three voices in a trio. Schutz does not do that. Instead, he uses just the duo or several duos as follows. First two basses, extremely low. I can hardly sing the lower one. So, and it's your power chord. Then, second statement on the second sowl, the second sowl, inverted power chord. We're in D Dorian. Then, filling in finally the thirds, we have uh, an overall minor triad that has been built up. Inverted again, only the top two. It's really a fragment of an F major. But then this one drops, and then check this out. Paul is both elevated and scared to death by this. So we have some fairly striking dissonances. Major second, ooh, and then minor second on Vosvergulp's do, ouch, me. <laughs> then it's taken over by two tenors. And once again, that's striking. Ooh, yeah. Then two women take it over. How open-minded is that? So not a holy trinity, but holy duos going on. Echoing, shall we say, in the canyon walls, maybe. And we're going to go here. We're in A minor now. Two instrumental lines take over the melody. Then we have a 14-voice chorus, 14 parts, with the two instrumental parts, with a figured bass line and its forte, and then it echoes down into mezzo piano and pianissimo, there's Gabrielli for you, and bonafide figured bass, first staff has a flat a three for G minor chord and a sus four, resolving down to a three that is A major chord, a harmonic minor, and a sharp alternation of G major and minor, Saul, soon to be Paul, doesn't know whether to be happy or sad. It's kind of like this Russian piece that goes do re mi, do re me, do re mi, re, do re me, do re mi, re, and so on and so forth. Slap you silly with the G majors and the G minors. And then kicking against the pricks, we will have more counterpoint alternating with the zowl, zowl, call and response. Eventually we will have duetting pairs of voices in counterpoint. Fantastic. And then finally, even an upper voice, Canis Firmus, a high tenor, going C, C, D, D, E, E, rising, which kind of anticipates what Handel will do in the Hallelujah Chorus. Yes. Oh, 